to Community Health TV powered by Community Therapy. I'm here with accredited practicing dietitian Grace, and we're talking about osteoarthritis, gout, and bone health. So bones and joints. So from an uh, from a I was about to say <laughs> I was about to say occupational yes. therapy. Um, when we love our occupational therapists, from a dietitian perspective, what do you think about with all of those things? There's a lot of things, but bones and joints, what can a dietitian do? Yeah, the, fir the first thought that really comes to mind there is particularly bone health as we age. So as we age, we are at an increased risk for becoming frail. Um, and certainly that's where having enough nutrition, mainly calcium, protein, vitamin D is really gonna help with our bone health. Um, but there are other factors as well. So as we age, you, being a physiotherapist, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people living in the community with arthritis or osteoporosis um, or any kind, like even just having a fall and being, you know, having that increased risk for fractures as well. Um, so then you're having to go and make sure that they're recovering well. Um, so Maybe bone health is a massive, and yes, exercises. strength and balance. And bone health has a lot to do with that in terms of strength, um, but also maintaining our bone health to prevent fractures as well if we were to have a fall. Um, so yeah, like I said, there are particular nutrients that do help. Things like our protein, our calcium, our vitamin and D. And does that need change over time? Yes, so absolutely. As we do age, we do require, for example, dairy, the food group, actually increases from about, well, for women, it's two and a half to four serves. So over time, it nearly doubles in the amount that you need. And that's based on not only the, our increased risk for frailty, and, um, just over time, our bone strength decreasing, but also nutrients aren't absorbed as well from our intestine as well. So that really does jump in terms of those requirements and, you know, trying to get in milk or cheese you, or yogurt. And do you find that anyone actually is aware of that before you tell them? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. Even, you know... So there's the, not much prevention there. Typically, the dietitian is coming in at a later stage of yeah. health progression to be like, oh, actually, we can... We need to, you know, shift some of the things you're eating here for these reasons. You no longer absorb this the same. Yes, correct. So you need to eat more of it or your energy demands are actually higher than you think they are because you're weaker than you used to be. So things cost a lot more energy, yep. those yep. sorts of conversations. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, coming into arthritis and pain on our joints, that's a huge impact um, within the community and particularly for our older adults as well. So from a dietetic perspective there, it's not just looking at bone health, but it is actually looking at one's ability to prepare a meal. So, you know, over time, has it become difficult to chop vegetables, yep. for example, or... Um, Somebody's grip strength, but also absolutely. their dexterity yep. from maybe rheumatoid arthritis of their hands. Yeah, so, you know, are they now not preparing meals and relying on more convenient foods or skipping meals because we can't prepare them? And then that in itself creates, um, you know, risk or potential for weight loss and weight management concerns mm -hmm. too. So from healthcare professional, physio, occupational therapist like at the start, but coordinator of supports, family members, what would I be looking for here? Is this me just saying that, oh, my grandmother's got a sore knee or is this that somebody says they've got gout? Is this somebody that has osteoporosis and they've just had a, like a DEXA scan or something? But there's, what are some of these things that I could look for or ask for to be like, hmm, maybe you need a dietitian to help you with something around bones and joints? Yeah, so I guess key re red flags would be around um, flare-ups. So if a client or participant is cl um, complaining of, oh, I'm really sore today, um, my Just arthritis is in a lot down. of pain, up and down, um, particularly recurrent pain, or if you're noticing, oh, each time I've come back and I ask, how are you today? Um, this particular person saying, oh, I'm in so much pain, my arthritis is hurting. Um, so that can be a red flag, as well as 
frailty. So frailty, um, there is different actually scales or identification for frailty out there that we can use. One of them being the clinical frailty scale, um, which rates in terms of, you know, if someone is at risk or is already frail and it might be, you know, key flags like slowing up or relying on supports to help with more of those activities of daily living. Yeah, fatigue, um, weight loss, yeah. strength loss, yeah. um, a yeah, slowing of walking are some key things to look for. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so something like that might be an indication that, hey, perhaps we need to look at your diet as well yeah. to see if this is something that we can assist with and make sure that you know, you're looking after or your bone, whether it's your bone health or weight management mm. um, as well. Yeah. So I think sometimes we're asking questions for different care needs, but I think often osteoarthritis, gout, um, bone health in general, often some of those things can be observed or some mm. people will give those things, those concerns up early because they'll say it or you can see that they're sore when they're opening the front door to come and greet you or something. So, but you can still, a lot of the time, whether it's a registered nurse, a coordinator of support, a different healthcare professional, we've usually got questions in our assessments around people's physical function and their pain and how they're moving that will probably flag some of these. So, um, but I think the missing area around these care needs is people don't typically think about the dietetic referral for the ability to help with pain management around things like osteoarthritis and maybe gout people think a little bit better around nutrition but still maybe not as well as they should and then definitely not as well as they should of early prevention or just continued um, management of people's bone health and that changing I guess nutritional profile as you age so be it's sort of it's almost a blanket statement of especially for older adults. An older adult should have seen a dietitian yeah. at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you're over 65, you should have seen a dietitian already. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're gonna always have to see somebody, but you need to have at least seen somebody once. Yeah. Even if it's a one-off to assess those care needs yeah. um, and make sure that you know there are strategies in place yeah. um, for that particular client to make sure that they are functioning the best that they can. Wonderful. All right. Thanks so much for your time in this episode. We'll see you in the next one.